Rachel, we good yet? We are good. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being here on uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, we had a fairly lengthy weekend uh, with Purdue Volleyball playing Friday five sets uh, against the uh, number two ranked team in the country and then uh, Nebraska and then on Sunday afternoon playing Northwestern, who's the 49th team in the uh, most recent RPI. Went five sets with both of them, lost to both of them. Um, I think that the general consensus was we played pretty well on Friday, and we played not so well the last three sets against uh, Northwestern on Sunday. That's the easy verdict. Uh, the more accurate verdict would probably be evaluating how the other teams played as well. And I thought in the last three sets, Northwestern was a totally different team than what we saw earlier or what we had seen early in the Big Ten season. Um, Still, we have work to do, but we're still the same team that had won seven out of eight coming into this weekend, beating some pretty good teams. So it's, uh, it's certainly a challenging time whenever you lose a couple on the home boards. And uh, we'll see what our staff and what our players are made out of because we have a short turnaround before the Illini come in here on Wednesday. Uh, they're coming off of a loss to Penn State on Friday and a win over Iowa on Saturday. And then we have Iowa the following Saturday. So uh, the hope was to take advantage of being at home, um, and we can still do that with uh, playing well this week. So with that, I've got questions for you. Dave, you touched on this uh, multiple times throughout the year, but when you have a team this young, do you have to expect a little bit of a roller coaster where you're going to look like an amazing team one night, and then some nights those girls are just going to gonna be off? Well, I mean, you don't want to expect it, but when it happens, um, I've been th around the game a long time, so I think you recognize that when you have a, a young team like that. But, you know, somebody might say, well, Nebraska is just as young as we are. Well, they've got other pieces that are really, really good, and those young players were the, number, the top players in their class. I mean, they're really, really good players. Um, I don't have an excuse for why, you know, we, we kind of um, went bad uh, on Sunday because we had really played seven pretty good sets in a row up until then. And I think fatigue, I think emotion, um, a lot of different things, but uh, watching our team play the last three sets was not anything like watching them play the first seven. And so that's something that we'll have to come to grips with as a team and figure out how to um, you know, make some adjustments. Some of it was, I thought, just skill level on the floor, and some of it was just emotion and um, some things we have to improve on, but also some things that we did really well this weekend. So I don't, want, I don't want to forget all the things that we did really well on Friday and early on Sunday, just because the last three, you know, we got punched in the mouth uh, by Northwestern. So you use that to, to, as motivation, but you also have to recognize that this team's making pretty solid progress. Illinois is a home match. Um, do you feel more pressure to win at home in front of the home fans than maybe on the road? I know there's pressure to win every night, but uh, obviously when you have a packed house, you want to send them fans home happy. Oh, I don't know if our players feel that way. I think as a coach, um, you want your fans to be happy. You know those people. I don't know the fans on the road very, very well, but um, you know our, our players and staff and marketing and everybody has worked really hard to create the situation we have here and I know our fans love this team I mean I, I haven't talked to a single fan that is disappointed with how the how hard this team plays and how they compete and how they care about you know Purdue volleyball and Purdue University but it is it is disappointing but that I got enough things to worry about Sam that I, I try not to worry too much about that but it does come into play certainly yeah um, just to, again on that on that home away front, I mean, four and five at home, it's got to be unusual. Um, has that just been, you know, a weird, unexpected thing, or, or is there anything you can pinpoint of, of why you're losing? No, I, I don't think uh, it's unexpected because our schedule has been pretty tough. Um, but the fact that we normally win at home, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think our winning record at home has been pretty good. Um, and it's something we're going to have to turn around. You know, we're going to have to find a way. If, if we're going to have success this season, we're going to have to win at home. 
because we've got some good teams coming in here and some average teams coming in here. Um, and, you know, um, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about that aspect of it right now. I'm just focused on trying to get better. And if we get better and start to play with consistent confidence, then I think that's, that's the answer. And then um, you, you talked after the, after the Northwestern game about trying to take away Julius Sanjacomo um, and kind of how you guys were unable to do that. It, it doesn't seem like it's the first time that like a one player has had a you know really big role against you guys. Well, we've played some really good players. Um, you know, look at the the kid from USC, who's first team All American and was the you know top recruit in her class. This girl wasn't the top recruit in her class, but the way she played yesterday, she looked like she could have been. And you know, she had her been injured early in the season, and looks like she's rounding back into you know, in pretty good shape. I still put a lot of that on us, that we, we were not doing a good enough job blocking or digging um, her. I don't want to take anything away from her because I thought she had a great match and she should remember that one for a long time. But I think that we did not defend her uh, as well as possible. And if you look on our board that's since been erased, I think Sam was in there and saw it yesterday. But one of the things was up there is that we have to, we have to contain number seven, which is Dodson, and 22, and you can pronounce her last name. Uh, but, uh, and we did contain Dodson, who was hitting 417 on the season. We did a nice job on her, but we didn't do as good enough, a good enough job on 22, who uh, is, is going to be a handful for anybody in this league. And then, you know, a follow-up on that is, is it tough for the players to adjust to, to you know, not trying to overcommit to one player and then maybe – um, like you said, you know, you, you played well against Dotson, but then you allow it to, to send your coma. Yeah, every rotation's different, okay? When you, when you look up at, at, at Northwestern, for example, uh, they, have, uh, they were, had two rotations as they, they made some changes in their lineup during the match. They had two rotations where they had both 22. What's her name again? Uh, San Giacomo. Yeah. She was up there with Dotson. And so how do, you, how do you really contain both of them if they're in system? And one of the big differences that happened in that match, early in the match, we're serving bullets over the net, and, and they're out of system. They're not passing the ball well. That made life easy. As the match wore on, we either lost some of our you know, strength of serving for whatever reason, or they just started passing the ball a lot better because they were in system more frequently, which makes it a lot harder to defend. But there are some things that, that I know we don't do well from a blocking standpoint and what I noticed in that match from a digging standpoint that we have to improve on. And then, um, you know, the, the John Shondell news has, has come out recently. Um, was that expected for you or how long, you know, have you kind of seen that coming? And then um, uh, how, uh, I guess, have, how, when's the last time you, you talked to him? When was the last time I talked to John? I talked to him yesterday after a match. Yeah, he was kind of happy he wasn't here, okay, to sit through that one. Um, but uh, um, I don't know if I've seen it coming. You know, he, he resigned for personal reasons, and so I think those are his reasons. I can't describe what his personal reasons are. I can just tell you that for 20 and a half years, he gave us everything that he had, and we had the best assistant volleyball coach in the Big Ten and maybe in the country, and our players loved him and uh, still do today, and they miss him. Um, but... Um, He's, he, was, he was great to have. You know, I, I'm 12 years older. I know he, he probably looks about the same age as I do, but he's, uh, he's 12 years younger. So when I grew up, I didn't spend a lot of time with him. You know, I was in college when he was five years old or six years old. So for me to be able to, to spend the last 20 years with him every day has, has been the highlight of, of my career here. Um, just learned so much from him and um, just got, got a chance to be with my brother every day. So it was great. Um, quick follow-up on that. How does your team and, and you kind of adjust to, to not having now a coach in practices and games? Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be a process, absolutely. Um, John did a lot in our program. Uh, he was the guy in the gym. Um, when I was out recruiting or if I was taking care of other details, we always knew we had one of the best coaches in the country teaching technique and fundamentals uh, with, with our athletes. So now... I'm going to have to, fortunately our recruiting is in pretty good shape right now. It's not like I gotta be running all over the country to find players. We're, we're a young team and we're already pretty much through, through the class of 2025 as far as getting commitments. So we can really focus uh, 
but putting the old ball coach back in the gym and spending a lot more time in there. But it's, it's different. It's different for everybody. And I, I don't want anyone on our staff to feel like they've got to become Russ Rose or John Cook or, you know, Kevin Hamley or some of these big shot coaches. We just have to be the best versions of ourselves. And players have to adjust a little bit as well. Um, you know, I can't describe what it's like for them not to have John, you know, in the gym with them or on the bench giving serving zones and things like that. But they have really responded really well, you know, young, as young people normally do. Uh, I've been pleased with how they've, they've moved on and they've accepted the, the situation. And um, I think emotionally it may have caught up with us a little bit, um, you know, this weekend. It was, this was an emotional weekend for a lot of different reasons. But um, I, I think we'll move on and it, it'll be a, a work in progress. But I, I love this team. I trust this team. And uh, I, I think the, you know, the, the last three sets yesterday were not really indicative of who this team is. Going back to yesterday, what do you think the difference was after those two sets? It seemed like you guys were rolling and then you have that little break. How did they come out with so much fire, especially after winning the third and extra points? Yeah, I, that's always a, a question that you ask yourself all night long is, you know, why did that happen the way that it did? Um, but I, I go back to the fact Northwestern was a different team. Um, they didn't pass well the first two sets. That's always a recipe for disaster, and it was. It made life easy for us. And sometimes when you win easy the first two sets, you know, the mindset, no matter what the leaders on your team might say, you still go out there and you're not quite in the same frame of mind that you were when you started the match. But I, I still want to give that credit to Northwestern and the fact that um, they had a, one individual take over a match, and we didn't step up. Uh, both from a coaching standpoint and a playing standpoint, and make the necessary adjustments to make it more difficult. Dave, you've gone back and forth this year a little bit with Taylor and with um, uh, with uh, Poulter at the setting spot. It looked like at times both struggled yesterday. How do you, when you're in that situation and neither pitcher is giving you what you need, what do you do? Well, I want to. I'm glad you brought that up because it's a precarious situation, both from a coaching standpoint and a playing standpoint. Those players are going to be a lot better if they know they own the position. You know, it's like a quarterback. You know, um, if the quarterback's going to have a lot more confidence if they know that it's their spot no matter what. But we're not in a position yet where either one of them are playing at that level on a consistent basis. And I feel as a coach, you have to be fair to your athletes that you give the opportunity when one isn't playing at the level you think that they're capable of and, and things are moving in the right direction, that you give somebody else that opportunity. And it just so happened that after about a game and a quarter yesterday, um, for whatever reason, it just wasn't our setters. I mean, you could go right across the board. We just lost a little bit of our focus and our mojo uh, that, that we had had. And um, obviously, if you're a setter on the team, it's more critical because they're, they're – involved in every single play and they're delivering every ball to the hitters but uh, I feel good about all three of our setters you know we have three of them and one of them had, had an opportunity to play a lot but I feel really good about them they come in they're going to work hard it's just gaining the confidence and it's it's a tough situation um, when they when they think they well I'm, I might come out I can go back and tell you the story when I was a high school basketball player just a couple of years ago and my coach literally every time one of the guards made a mistake we were walking right to the bench because we knew we were coming out. Whether you threw it away, you missed a shot, you turned it over, we're, you're out of the game. Now, you're coming right back in because somebody's going to make a mistake and you'll get the opportunity to come back in. I never want to be that kind of a coach. I never want to be that, that coach where the players are worried if I'm not playing well you know, for a stretch, I'm coming out. Even though in, in our league, you've got to play well uh, to win. But I, I, I try to give them a long leash. A couple questions on reviews. Have you ever had a crowd <laughs> talk you into doing a review like the block party did yesterday? Well, I had a conversation because against Nebraska, they made the noise and, and thought a ball was, was in that was served out almost an identical play. I think it was, might have been a jump serve from Chloe. And uh, so I challenged it, and they lost it. So later on that night, I went over to the block party and told them they've got to be better. I can't be wasting challenges. When, when, and they, they guaranteed me it was in. They said it was in. So then when uh, it happened this other time, and still timing's everything. Uh, that was a time where we either needed a timeout or we needed to have a challenge. And I always look, and, and, and we should have people strategically in our gym 
um, that we trust that can look at those lines and call them. But I looked over there and on that far side, similar to where you sit, and I didn't find anybody had a clue. I wasn't getting any indication, but the block party was making a lot of noise. So I went ahead and put the green up, and uh, it worked out in our favor that time. Secondly, I think you talked about this yesterday after the match. Some of these matches are becoming really interminable with, with the challenges. Uh, and, yeah. and from a specter standpoint, very difficult to watch. What can you do? What, what very difficult can to make? coach in as well, Tim. Um, they've got to put a time limit on it. I think 60 seconds. I mean, if they go over there, I mean, they're still given that they can't tell sign, okay, after seven or eight minutes, okay. I say go over and look at it at 60 seconds, and if you can't figure it out in 60 seconds, the play stands. Because I, 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 I agree. Those, I mean, the one match last on Friday night was over three hours long, and it probably about the same distance, the same time distance last night. It was just they're too long. So I, I, I don't argue with that, and I think that I know I, I've, I've talked this weekend with our um, – head of officials for the Big Ten, believe it or not. I had a conversation, and um, she, uh, she mentioned that they're working as hard as they can to try to make progress with that. But we definitely had a call against uh, Nebraska that, that went to the challenge, and they came back, and they said they couldn't tell. But yet on the cameras I'm looking at, it was clear as day. So um, that was what she was saying. They've got to do better. Yeah. I, I second your nomination. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Hey, thanks so much for being here.